Hello everyone, welcome to the Real Biased Podcast. My name is James, Real Biased Gaming. I am here with Master of Ponage and It's a Mobius Life. Master of Ponage, introduce yourself. Tell us where we can find you on the interwebs. I'm the Master of Ponage. You can catch me live nightly every single day of the week, seven days a year, 365 days out of that year, sorry. And uh, <laughs> at uh, twitch.tv slash Master of Ponage 2 or on YouTube at Master of Ponage Gaming. Hey, yo. And Mobius. Hello, Hello. newcomer. Hi, so... Uh, Who are you and what do you do? Um, I'm a concept artist and illustrator, and I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash It's a Mobius Life. And you can catch me on Twitter as well with the same handle, It's a Mobius Life. And then I'm on ArtStation as well at Nathaniel Harrower. Nathaniel Harrower. It's it's my it's Harrow. it's my full name because like gotcha. I don't know I feel like it's kind of professional, right? I'm like a professional. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, it actually it has a very official right? sound. That's why I think it's like Doctor like Nathaniel Harrower. Ooh, Ooh. Right? just get got chills. Get chills there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's good. I'll make sure I type it out so we get the correct spelling um, in the info section. Oh. Let me get the let me get the podcast posted. So yeah, I'll have to remember that. Okay, well. Welcome, welcome, and uh, that's that's cool. This is, we'll get a cool, like slightly different perspective, the the art perspective this week, not just not just old gamers talking about the good old days, stupid gamers, Counter Strike one point six, and <laughs> was that the good old days? There's probably plenty of gamers that would say that would laugh at me thinking that was not the good old Unreal days. Tournament. I mean, was like the pride. <laughs> that's true, man. Unreal Tournament was pretty good. Yep. Hey, yeah, that was number one, number one. So, what have you guys been? streaming this past week have you been entertaining the the vast community of gamers out there this past week on your uh on your streams who's, who's going first go all right there we go yeah. yeah yeah so uh so this week actually i i played a more sea of thieves just killing it in sea of thieves and uh we, we actually took a day off and uh we played a little bit of europa universalis 4 and uh i'm pretty new at that and that's a pretty brutal learning curve on a game so yeah, okay, how, you know, I have to jump in there. How is that possible that you took, like, one day off and you play a little bit of Europa Universalis? Like, doesn't that mean you got through, like, 2% yeah, of the that's tutorial? that's like a basically? half a turn right there, honestly. Yeah, right. yeah, no, for real. So, um, you know, we got through, I'd say, about halfway through a game. And, uh, I mean, uh, you know, I, I probably have, like, 35 hours in-game. And so, so for mm -hmm. me, it's still okay. just brutal learning. You know, it's... Like, I, I know the basic concepts of the game, but other than that, it's just, yeah. I'm getting raffle stomped. <laughs> I'm pissing everybody off, and I'm not meaning to, and, you know, I'm like, well, that guy doesn't like that guy, so I'll attack them. And then I take all their land, and all of a sudden, I'm getting attacked by the guy that didn't like him. I'm like, I don't understand why. And my chat's like, well, it's because you're stupid, man. You got too much aggressive expansion. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell's that? <laughs> yes, you're winning the game too hard, and so now you lose. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All of a sudden, there's like 20 countries invading my land. I'm like, I don't understand. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. How much... Um, one more question. Sea of Thieves has just been like a constant coming back every uh, every podcast now for the... Yeah. We, <laughs> we've been talking from Bonage. But how much money are you up to? Have you uh, crossed the uh, 1 million line? Um, I think I would have a couple times over now, but I keep on blowing all my money on stupid stuff that I don't use. I mean, like, cause, you know, it's just skins. And I'm like, you know what? This skin looks kind of oh, nice. Yeah. Maybe it'll go. Nope, that's terrible. Put it away. And then I put all my old stuff again. <laughs> and so <laughs> just, I'm just basically blowing all my money for no reason. Oh, I really man. should be saving it because there's a big DLC coming out. And I know there's going to be a whole bunch of new stuff that I'm going to want to buy. So I'm trying to save, man, but it just burns a hole in my pocket too quick. I'm a terrible pirate. I'd have to work until I was dead back then. I would never retire. A terrible pirate? What do you mean? That, that's exactly, that, that sounds exactly like a pirate to me. That's true. I mean, they, they pretty much died, right? Like, they didn't, they didn't retire. That'd be lame. Right. Yeah, yeah, no. They, they went out in a blaze of glory. They went to Tortuga with all their winnings. And <laughs> true. <Right. laughs> Give me a good lunch and a good ale. Yeah, there you go. Or some good rum or... Rum, yeah, whatever. Yeah, red red rum. <laughs> Mobius, yes. What have you been streaming this week? Uh, so this week I've just been on the art grind per normal now. Um, I don't yeah. really stream a lot of games anymore. There hasn't been a lot coming out recently that have been really interesting to me. So I've kind of just been doing work stuff on stream for the last little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, tell us about that. Like, what what projects are you working on right now on stream? Um, so I was just doing some like 
portrait studies over the week. I had a couple commissions that I did, and then I did a portfolio piece, or started a portfolio piece at least. So, and yeah, okay. it's been fun. Cool. It's cool. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay. All right. All that all that commission work. That's yeah. That's interesting. It's a very different life. Yeah. I like that. Well, now, now bank. we met. Mobius, when you were you were basically exclusively doing video games. Yes, this is what like a year um, and a half ago. When did you kind of? Yeah, 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 that was, yeah, about a year and a half ago. Yeah. When um when did you kind of like decide to make the full switch, or maybe you want to tell, share a little bit about like why you made that choice, what kind of pushed you that way? Um, well, if we're gonna be like frank about it, I kind of just like didn't like streaming anymore because games were <laughs> like games are like a fun thing for me to kind of do with my friends, but I'm not very good at doing you know, on stream anymore, I don't think. It kind of just wasn't for me. And I was already transitioning into more of, like, a full-time role with the company I'm with right now. So I kind of just took that and ran with it and just do creative stuff now. It's fun. There you go. How how has your growth been? Like, do you notice a viewer count increase, drop, Um, people more interested in what you're doing? uh, Overall, I have a higher average than I would, but... It's less now about like kind of doing it as a like a growth type of thing. So it's less of like a there's not really a litmus test for me anymore because I just I really enjoy just kind of hanging out and drawing. And it's kind of just all that stuff has really been pushed to the back of my mind about it. And I kind of just get to have fun again. And like the numbers game hasn't really mattered to me in a while. So that's yeah. good. No, dude, that is so cool because yeah, because you get to your. Man, that, that's so interesting. It's it's like, it's hard. It's the most difficult thing for a streamer to do, but usually it's the most entertaining. You can tell is when they're playing, when they're streaming the game, but they're, you can tell that if they weren't streaming, they'd be playing the game anyways. Yes. You know, and you're you're kind of like doing the art for like other reasons outside just. Yeah, like. Oh, I want to get big on Twitch. Yeah, well, like, it's the same thing that I'd be doing otherwise. So. Yeah. I just kind of yeah. get to share that you with other people. You just be doing now. it by yourself. Yeah, exactly. So. I just get to share it with people now and. Oh, it's fun. Get to do like viewer requests and do some fun characters with them, and that's fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I th- I th- that's critical in a stream, to be honest. In my opinion, like I, I won't watch a streamer that's doing something that I don't think they want to do. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. 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 No, that's super cool. You know, that's that's so interesting, and it's I, I've I've wondered about this, and I don't know. It, it can be a slightly depressing topic, but like, like. There's there are hundreds, even thousands of people out there who are just starting out streaming or who have been streaming for a while, um, you know, who go through the ups, ups and downs. But like, what is the what is the litmus test or like, when do you know when it's time to stop? And that's something I've kind of like thought about, like, man, when when do you want to stop? And and that's that's really cool. I kind of recently I was talking to my stream about this the other day, actually. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. I was asking them if people my size because they were talking about uh, Grim. One of my moderators was talking about one of his like people he followed before me um, would stop streaming and then start streaming again. And be like, I'm back, I'm back, and then he'd be back for like a month and then he would just disappear off the face of the earth again. I'm like, I wonder why that is. I wonder what I wonder what's driving people's decision to stream or not to stream, and you know when they're going to hmm. come back and because because he'd come back with so much fervor and then he would just go away again. So I'm wondering yeah. what it is that stops people from wanting to continue yeah. trying to grow. Like, what's the point? Well, that they choose that. And I can, I can definitely say I relate very much to, to Mobius. Like, you, you kind of get this breath of fresh air. I took a, I took a three week break in January and just kind of like rethought the whole thing. And that was when I, that was when I had the, the game with the most hours played on it for me, or second most right now, is Total War Warhammer Two. Do you play like, it anymore on like, stream or no? I, I no, I haven't played it since January, yeah. since the Tomb Kings came out, and I uh, I had five hundred and thirty plus hours on that game, and that was all on stream, and I uh, I couldn't stand it anymore, yeah. and I just like stopped streaming, and and then I came back and I just started playing RPGs, and I was like, screw it, like we're gonna do this, and and yeah, and you know t- the numbers went way down, you know viewership and whatever, but I was having so much of a better time that it it was you know unquestionably the right choice Um, so my question for you would be this right so the real question is so you lost viewers you lost your average viewer count which i did too when i moved away from life is futile you're um at the mmo but when you're having a better time i've personally noticed that even though i have less viewers my engagement has gone up like chat is going way more active since i'm enjoying what i'm doing and 
I tend to get more like bit donations when, you know, I'm having a good time and having fun. Have you noticed that yeah. as well? I, uh, you know what? I, uh, I, I don't know. That's tough to say. That's tough to say. I, I haven't really, I haven't really. Um, okay. I really think I, the, the thing that I, but that's, but that is because, and this is interesting, uh, Ponage, because, because I, I have kind of moved away and we've talked about this. I moved away from looking at the numbers at all. Right. And you, uh, you really enjoy like soaking up those numbers and kind of looking at data and stuff. Right. Yeah. And that's yeah. For, for your streams. That's really cool. I, I personally just like had to move away from that. And so I just haven't been, been paying attention. I like, maybe that's the case. Maybe it's not. I don't know, but I just, I just stopped paying attention and I just like focused on hanging out and having a good time playing playing video games that's good that's good and, and it's just been better it's just been it's felt better and and i i've just actually been able to keep streaming as opposed to like streaming myself right into the ground right and so yeah there you go okay so yeah that was that was an interesting tangent i didn't expect to go on but uh some interesting thoughts there to chew on that um well do either of you guys have maybe a notable moment uh from your stream this past week that you that you'd like to share you know like like what was something that that was really exciting or a very very exciting thing that happened or um and i'll, I'll go first on this one uh for me i was really excited because this was the i got to play yesterday um well, I didn't stream much. I missed three days of the stream because of my brother's bachelor party. Uh, but then I came back and I got to stream um, Battletech, which because I got a, I got a review. Early? I got a view review code. I I just it was like it is the coolest thing. I just emailed Paradox. Oh, yeah, it's uh, like hey, I, hey, I looked everyone online how to code. do that. I should have just emailed him. Yeah, I I couldn't believe it. I I literally did it because I I listened to. Um, uh, oh crap, Timothy Harris, I believe, and and Gary Vaynerchuk, and some of these like like entrepreneurial minds and stuff like that. And they usually talk about doing exercise and things to like practice getting used to rejection, okay. <laughs> or just people saying no, you know, and just like kind of getting you over that fear, right? And so yeah. I I try and do personal like exercises like that to just like kind of keep myself loose, I guess you could say. And so I was just like, I just emailed them. I was like, just so I could practice doing it and zero uh, percent chance that I'm going to get it. And then like, oh yeah, you're on the list. And so, wow. So I, yeah, so that, and that was, that was just like a cool thing. Um, and I got to talk to people, you know, that know a bunch about the game, but really haven't been able to play it much. And uh, that was just a really cool experience. I had a lot of fun, and a lot of people came out last night. So yeah, that, that was, was really awesome. Cool. So, yeah, what about, what about you guys? Oh, <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> but yeah, Mobius, what about you, dude? Um, I didn't have anything like actually that memorable this week. I just had like a, like good time. I just got to paint a bunch of pretty pictures and do some work, and it was pretty low key and chill all week. And yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> no um dude honestly a chill weeks are good weeks man. yeah it was just like a chill week i um most of my work right now is through like freelance stuff that's on when i'm not doing work with the uh, the one company that i can't even name because i'm under nda still which is pretty sweet Ooh. yeah it's pretty sweet dude um okay well see that's cool yeah, right that right there is cool uh, yeah. this guy's under an nda for the dudes he works for yeah that's, that's sweet cool. Yeah, because like nothing's been announced yet. It's pretty fun. Um, he could tell us, but then he'd have to kill us. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, no, so um, like when I'm not doing that, I have a bunch of freelance work. So this week, um, there was like a bit of an engine mixed up. Somebody who was doing a bit of Unity work and implementing a bunch of the assets into Unity screwed up the, our mother Git file pretty good. So we oh, had God. to, everyone kind of had to like, kind of go into overdrive and do a bunch of stuff and i kind of just got to sit there and hang out and not have anything to do so i just did a bunch of personal stuff all week and it was really fun it was a nice breath of fresh air oh, there you yeah. go. thank god for somebody else's mess ups yeah as long as it's not my fault i really don't care anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's not your company no, exactly so, right come on. Yeah. there you go how about you punish um you know like uh i Unfortunately, my, my most memorable moment this week was actually we got schooled by some guys this week on uh, Sea of Thieves. I, I wouldn't say schooled. Oh. Yeah, so uh, they caught us completely unprepared. Oh. Uh, we had already sunk a couple galleons in a sloop, and uh, we were out of cannonballs, out of planks, so we couldn't really repair ourselves. 
And these guys come out of nowhere after we had finished a skull fort. And uh, we were parked in a really awkward position to avoid cannon fire from some towers. And so we couldn't really get out in time. We had like, I think we had six cannonballs or something like that. So we hit them a few times and then, uh, you know, they sank us. And we, I mean, we had like six hours worth of loot. And so, so the whole thing, the problem was, Jeez. is, I mean, you've seen it. We don't sink. Like we, we run the seas, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, so I was like, dude, today let's, let's go the entire eight hours without ever turning in and see how big of a turn we get. Well, we're like six hours in and these dudes catch us completely unprepared. And, uh, so we chased them for like two hours and, uh, they were just running, running, running. Cool guys, by the way, they ended up messaging me afterwards and saying like, Hey man, that was awesome. You know, it's weird. It's, it's strange for us to find a crew that's actually on par with us. I'm like, dude, that's exactly what we were saying. You know, like it was crazy. And so, uh, so cool guys, but, uh, yeah, we chased him for like two hours and finally Grim was like, okay, I gotta go. I gotta eat. Like, I can't keep on chasing these guys. Cause we were like, we were just, they were just a little bit ahead of us forever. And then yeah, he yeah. logs off, so I'm soloing now, and I finally sink him, but I sink as well. And so then it's, now it's a race back to the loop before it sinks. Yeah. And so I see him up there, and they get there just before me. I slam into him, cannonball him, jump out, pistol a couple of them to death, and they sink. I repair my ship, get all the loot back on board, and I'm like, Grim! I'm like yelling for Grim, like, if you're still on the stream, please log back in. And then some <laughs> random guy logs in, so he got all the loot. Grim didn't get any of it. We turned oh, it gosh. all in. But literally after all that time, Grim didn't get any of the loot turn-ins and we oh. got it. So we got it back, but it took forever. Jeez. Yeah. Jeez. That was my memorable moment. Unfortunately, it ended badly. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> still, those are the... There you go. It's, it's still good times, still good memories. Yeah. When you get your butt kicked. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. That was that was definitely <laughs> God. That was the hardest lesson I had to learn when I when I was playing Total War Warhammer and playing it on Legendary. I still remember losing campaigns and just getting so so frustrated. <laughs> yeah, especially if you make I don't way deal with end, the, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just oh my gosh, I just don't deal with uh, losing very well. <laughs> See, you, well, you and I are both competitive, right? <laughs> yes. So so I'm very the same much way. So. In the moment, and like the, for me, in the heat of the moment, I'm like, God, yeah, da, da, you know, I'll freak out. But in the end, I'm not really truly upset at the person. I'm not upset that I lost. I'm upset that at some point I made a mistake that made it so that I lost. That's what I'm upset about. Mm. Mm. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. All right, so Mobius, yes, sir. Uh, I do, I do have just, just kind of a, a get to know you, the audience question out there. Why don't you, um, why don't you share a couple, uh, like one or two video games that that you i mean you can say you could say your favorite or maybe like the most influential right or like maybe the the most nostalgic video game for you what are some what are some video games that have really God. really influenced you that a part of your life <sighs> okay so maybe this is super unpopular right but i don't really have i don't really get nostalgic over games at all oh right is yeah okay is i kind of just throw them to the wayside like the garbage they are you know <laughs> no but um, <laughs> um <laughs> Been there, done that, right? <sighs> That's okay. You sound like my dad. My yeah, dad's right? like, I only have to watch a movie once. Yeah, like after, like, after I, I kind of you know, experienced up, it once, I'm just like, yeah, that was cool. I don't ever have to play that again. I kind of know it. Um, <laughs> but like growing up, I was a really, really big shooter guy. Um, my dad used to play a lot of Quake and Unreal Tournament when I was like really, really young. Yeah. So like the first kind of games yeah. playing for me was like that. And then I kind of started playing a lot of Halo in like junior high i guess like every other person on the planet halo 3 was like the cool yes. thing so halo 3 is like Fortnite probably now. one yeah. of them and then okay i don't know probably like Baldur's gate that was probably the two okay oh man you yeah. just found your way into my heart yeah by the way. <laughs> yeah so you're a halo player and a Baldur's gate lover yeah my God, like those two right there those are probably like my two so my two favorite games are there uh, you know. no. okay no that see that's that's so interesting to me and that's what that's the whole re I mean, it's it's the whole reason why I I chose the name Real Bias Gaming. It's just like that's like that's a biased opinion, dude. Like right there, I love that. That's that is so different from from anything I've heard before, right? Because like we have, ga I mean, you you started streaming for a reason, and you didn't start streaming because you're kind of mediocre about video games, right? You, but we you you know you love like chilling and hanging out with people, yeah. right? And hang out with your friends and doing that stuff. Um, but yeah, it's just like a whole different perspective, right? It's okay it's, to be wrong. It's okay. Oh, I'm never wrong. <laughs> it's okay to not be <laughs> fanatical about all the games that I think are great. I guess it's all right. But 
Yeah. No, and, and, and then probably StarCraft. I used to play, like, StarCraft's probably, like, up there as well. I should have said that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Top, top 10 anime, anime betrayals was Kerrigan. Yeah, it was Kerrigan. Yeah. yeah. Like, Brood War was fantastic. I grew up playing, like, a lot of that when I was, like, really young. I tried to be really edgy and stuff, and I played custom games all the time. And then when, like, <laughs> Wings of Liberty came out, I went so hard on that game. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was like, it's, <laughs> oh my god, it's like instead of doing homework, I was just like laddering. And it's like getting a ladder anxiety at school because I wasn't grinding my way to masters. Feels bad. Wait, did you did you make it to I masters? was only ever high diamond. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. So, I mean, still. Yeah, go. my best friend was GM for like the longest time and he always yelled at me. He would like, <laughs> we used to like, um, like after like school, and this probably like, I think came out when I was in like grade 10, I think. That's, I, that sounds right, okay. so I'm just going to go with it, right? But we used to, like, drive to my house right after, sure. and he'd just, like, sit over my shoulder and yell at me. It's like, why haven't you queued more probes? Ah! I was like, all right, all right. Dude, your own personal trainer, your own personal star yeah. trainer. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that sounds like a pretty nostalgic story to me. <laughs> okay. But that, but that's a social experience. <laughs> Here's not, the thing, all right? The, not is, the game, right? I don't right? need you to tell me how I'm feeling. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't get it. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Oh, oh okay. Okay. I'll, I'll read up on it later. All right. So let's let's talk a little bit about news. Now we've got to uh, get to know our video game selves and live streaming selves and artistic and not nostalgic selves a little bit better. Um, so a couple of interesting f- notes have been, uh, how do you say, trickling to the surface here bubbling to the surface of the uh, the video game world and um <laughs> this is news that i mean i got over the the call of duty series a long time ago and a series that that i i really really loved um that was pretty influential honestly for my younger days because call of duty was probably one of the last video games call of duty 2 i think was the last video game that i actually played consistently with my dad um, cause I grew up like when I was really young, we played like doom and Duke Nukem and I would press the fire button, which was control. Yeah. And my dad would like do the moving around and stuff. Nice. Uh, the arrow keys. Good stuff. Yeah. Man. Oh dude. So much fun. But, uh, he, <laughs> but then as I got a little older, right, we played like age of empires. Then was a game like he would play and I would watch, or I would play and he would watch. And then, um, and then call of duty, we'd play multiplayer, um, and we only had one computer, and so we'd, we'd share on there, and so that was... Um, but I, I I, fell so in love with those single-player campaigns as well, and uh, there's been a lot of talk coming out recently about Black Ops 4, and uh, basically, well, PC Gamer here uh, has an article, Do FPS Games Still Need a Single-Player Campaign? And Call of Duty Black Ops 4's rumored lack of a traditional campaign raises the question. So we're going to... We're going to talk about the question because it's definitely a rumor. Um, and and what's interesting about this rumor, let me see if I can find the exact quote. Um, because what the rumor seems to imply is actually that they've run out of time to get this, a single player campaign done. Uh, is, is actually some of the some of the stuff that I've read. So they're they're like working on all this different stuff. And if, I mean, you can only assume they're, that Call of Duty is going to try and come out with some kind of freaking battle royale mode. I mean, I've heard it rumored, yeah. not, not go for something like that. Um, but, but that's interesting. They're working on all this stuff and then they go, Oh, we actually don't have time for the single player campaign. Let's just, let's just cancel it. You know, and this is, you know, one of the more storied, I mean, franchises obviously. And it's always had, it's had the perennial single player campaign. And actually black ops was the one that revived the single player campaign. Right. It's like that. The very first black ops game, you just went in there and just like, I mean the the insane twists and your main the main character getting the char- the player character rather getting gets like tortured throughout the whole thing and it's a really intense experience new and so so yeah maybe I mean we can go a lot of different ways here we can talk about some of your favorite uh, single player experiences we could talk about what kind of games probably didn't need a single player experience and I don't know do you think this is the future do you think this is maybe just a thing that like some games will do. It's more of a triple A thing, or what do you what do you think about this? Okay, I mean, I, I yeah, Mobius, you got something. Okay, well, like even if if we're looking at like FPS as a whole, right, is like 
the let's let's I'll put like competitive in quotation marks, right? But most of the competitive FPS for probably the past like well like three or four years don't even have a single player anyway. They're completely multiplayer focused. And if we're looking at yeah. like what Call of Duty's like guns are, right? It's the co-op zombies mode and then multiplayer, right? So I feel like it's like a logical kind of means to like what they do anyway. Whereas, like, no one really cares about single player in an FPS unless maybe it's Halo. Because, what, if you really want something super cinematic and visceral or anything, right? It's like, I don't know, I don't... At least for me, it's like, it's not long enough to really have a cool story. And there's games like Uncharted and The Last of Us who do something cinematic way, way better with a higher production value, right? So them just focusing on the multiplayer and maybe pushing that to an end where it can actually stack up against some of the other, I guess, like juggernauts of that genre now is probably for the best. Hmm. You know, I tend to agree. So, so for me, it's like when I look, when I look at an FPS game, I'm looking for one of two things. Is the story good? If no, is the multiplayer good? And so I'm not, when I buy an FPS, I'm not looking for both. I don't care. Like, you know what I mean? I'll buy it if one of the two is good, not if both are bad, though. So for me, hyper-focusing on one or the other is really where the game is going to shine. Like, well, did they focus on multiplayer or single player? Because if you look at any FPS, name one, besides Halo, again, <laughs> exclude Halo from this, name one that's that's really, really good in both, recently. And it's, it's right, hard to find Recently, one. yeah. Yeah. Well, even know. Halo, even Halo, I mean, you know, Halo 5, like, like, I actually didn't play the Halo Five single player, but everybody I talked to like was they were all really disappointed with the 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 main campaign, the story. Really? Yeah, I was the exact opposite. I thought the multiplayer was absolute trash in Halo Five, and that yeah. the the story was the only reason to buy it. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, I, I love the if... fact that you know, like they they took a different turn. It was much darker than the other part, you know, the other games in the series, and uh, yeah, I think yeah. it was good though. Because I mean, like I've read all the Halo books. I've even read the Halo books to my to my kids when you know they're they're they need a book or something to be read. I like read them some of the mm-hmm. Halo novels or you know like so to <laughs> me to me the story in Halo is the really the reason I buy them still, other than the fact that I used to play competitive. But that's that's long days past. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. So okay, so you think this is a? Uh, I mean, well, what's what's interesting about this? I guess is that to me. Is that I I look at this as, huh? I look as, at this as an attack on our American traditional value. No, wait, no, that's that's not what I think. <laughs> I, <mean. laughs> I I I do wonder if this if this reaches beyond, um, beyond uh, first person shooters, and. Uh, I mean, obviously, I definitely I respect and, and appreciate even you know the. Uh, um, g- Going for your competitive advantage, right? Going for your when you're making a game, what are you good at, right? And if it's you're good at making a multiplayer game, then do that. You know, make the multiplayer the best you can, and don't worry about single player, right? And maybe the other way around, if you're really good at making an incredible story, you know, don't don't worry about making some like super balanced, super epic multiplayer thing. Like I, I could appreciate that. You know, you you want to make the game that you that you want to make that you're good at making. Um, and certainly, yeah, as you say, Call of Duty, it's, it's zombies, it's multiplayer, it's all that stuff. But I do wonder, and especially with, you know, EA, um, I mean, they've, they've kind of backtracked on this somewhat, but you know, their, their comments last year about, about, uh, moving away from, from single player games, right? From single player experiences and wanting to try, try different things. And I just, I wonder if this is something that, that might push out into more and more, um, genres and new releases where where these things are are ignored. Um, I don't know. It's it, it's interesting. I, I so on that note, I feel like EA. The reason they were moving away from stories last year, and now they're they're backtracking on that, is because it's harder for them to sell loot boxes in a single player campaign. It's harder for them to make money on it. But now that they're backtracking <laughs> all those loot boxes, I, I I see more single player stuff coming out from EA. Because that's no mm. longer that's no longer a valid source of money for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see. It, I, I've been thinking this whole time with EA talk about Anthem, um, and then talk about Anthem, and, and and it's it has seemed to me like that game to me looks like something where 
their initial idea for it, their initial dream for Anthem, right? I can just, I can just see, and obviously this is pure speculation, but in my mind's eye, I see all the, the higher ups at EA and like, let's just make Anthem and we'll make it, you know, in some ways better than like destiny two. And it'll just make us millions off of microtransactions. Right. <laughs> like it'll just be a vehicle for micro. That's always how I've thought of it. And I, I've been wondering if they were planning to, or hoping to like backtrack on that. Um, and maybe like add some more like single player content, like not to forget that, um, yeah, you know what? Maybe, maybe that's where my random rambling is kind of, kind of going here is that, I do kind of worry, you know, I, I meme about an, an attack on whatever values, but I do, I do worry that like the single player, the individual gamer, you know, the gamer that I grew up without a, a big group of like gamer friends. I really didn't have anybody that was even close to being as into video games as I was, you know, and I can only imagine like hopping on to, you know, when, if I was 12 and buying the latest Call of Duty or whatever, and like, oh, I can't just experience some single player like stuff on my own. Like I have to go into a lobby and like be competitive and, and play like that kind of sucks. Yeah. You know, that, I get that's, that's really where I'm, where I think I'm, I'm going with this. That troubles me. It's like, man, I, you don't have that single player experience. A, a, a single gamer, you know, they get the game for their birthday or whatever. And they can't, they can't just go and have an experience with that game by themselves. Right. Well, I, well, and that's where, that's where the single player, you know, developers will come in. Well, you know, they're, they're going to come in because, Really, like there, there are people out there. There are developers out there that really shine. They have amazing writers, you know, and they'll be making really good single player campaigns, where that's the focus. Yeah, yeah. Well, what would you guys then, say is like a side. good single player campaign that's come out recently? That's this. I want to kind of trap you guys into a corner with this. <laughs> so, can we include co ops? No, completely single player. Completely single player. Right, because if we're talking about co-op campaign, I think that's completely different. And then that's what, like, something like Anthem or Destiny goes into, right? Where you can have a single player experience, but you're still playing it with your friends online. And if you're looking at, let's say, something like Uh, EA is doing right, is we want to justify the, like, the gamer to play our game for more than just the 15 hours of the single player campaign. Right, so that's I can see why they're even moving away from single player in general. Is if you want people to keep playing the game, give them fulfilling multiplayer, cool co op, like a fun adventure like that, right? So that they can play for their hundred hours or whatever it is, and then be happy with the game, or they keep going, and then you get those people who are spending money on cosmetic microtransactions because they love the game so much and they just want to have like the coolest version of their avatar possible. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? That that's actually that is actually a really good point. Um, just to so yeah, I guess my my statements there were more more talking about an EA um, that that develops games that uh, they're they're doing what you say, but they're doing it. They've been doing it incorrectly. Maybe right. That was that was the whole thing with well, that was the whole thing with like Battlefront, right? Is that they instead of focusing on giving players enough value to get hundreds, you know, or a hundred hours out of their game, they just they focus too much on making sure that they could get money out of players and and uh, and super art- artificially, not superficially, artificially increased the how long you. I think Battlefront was just a bad game. I don't think it failed because of the. The whole microtransaction thing. I think it was just like not good, so people didn't play it. No, but that's what I'm saying. That that is what I'm saying. Is that you're saying a company like EA looks at gamers and oh, says, "Oh, sorry, yes, we yeah. want we want to offer a valuable, you know, hundred hours of gameplay. How do we give you know get players to yeah, play a exactly. hundred hours? And we want that to be worthwhile, right? We, if we want to encourage them to do that, it's like, well, there's the sleazy way to get them to play a hundred hours, but there is also a good way, a quality way to get them to play a yeah, hundred hours. Like, and then and Battlefront wasn't that. So, like, I'm, I'm even gonna backtrack a little bit and talk about like the FPS single player thing for a second, right? Is we sure. look at something like Doom, right? The new Doom that came out, right? Like the, what was yeah, it, 2015 yeah. or 2016? It was a really, really well-crafted, 16, fun single-player game, right? But, like, even after that... <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Um, I don't know, it's just like, if you're trying to keep your game relevant, it, I don't think a single-player is, like, the right way to go. And then we can look at, what, like, the... Was it, not Castlevania, what's the new thing that came out? Like, w- yeah, Wolf- it was Yeah, Wolfenstein, like the new Wolfenstein that came out, right? Was... Oh, yeah, and the Shadow of the Claw. Yeah, yeah it was and just two, like, it was yeah, like a really... 
I, I think it was just like a really, really average single player game that had absolutely nothing else past like the 15 or 20 hours that it took you to beat the game. And if that's all you're offering with your single player, then like, I'm not going to pick it up. And then on the flip side, we see like, let's say like even like a really good crafted single player that also has co-op intertwined with it would be like Divinity Original Sin 2, where you can seamlessly play co-op and single player together and the experience changes drastically, but you're still, it's still the same story throughout. And that's kind of where I would like, or I want, I guess, or I guess even campaign or story games in general to go. Because even like things like that increase the longevity of the game so I can justify my 80 Canada buck purchase of every single video game. Oh yeah. So, but what you're saying is kind of true, right? So, so that is the death of true single player. Yeah, no, I don't, I think because true single player yeah. is completely dead. I don't want to buy them anymore. Yeah. Cause, cause I've been the whole time I've been mm. quiet. I've been racking my brain trying to think of a true single player game. And I can't think of one. The, the, literally, the only one I can come up with is KSP, and there's no story behind it, but it's purely a single player experience that I've spent hundreds of K- hours wait, in. Wait, KSP, uh, Kerbal Space Program. Sure, oh. yeah. <laughs> or like there, there okay. was like Near Automata this year, which was a really really good last year. Or yeah. last year, sorry, that was a really really good game. And Horizon Zero Dawn. And Horizon Zero Dawn. I didn't like Horizon Zero Dawn, but that's okay. just like me. I I took it. I haven't played it, but. It- it is one of those like perennial, you know, Metacritic. Yeah, 70, right. It's 80s, just like you know, right? yeah. Like, people can be super happy that we they got like a really really good single player game, right? But like, I think the last the last good one for me is easily like The Last of Us. I thought that was like a really really good one because it was and that's pretty old now, right? Yeah, because like it was a really really strong narrative experience, and I that's yeah. kind of what I'd rather more because like I don't I in my single player game I really do not care about anything mechanical. Is I'd rather just be able to focus on like cool story moments and that's what i thought that yeah, delivered really story. really strongly and then i thought near automata was like really good as well even though i wasn't a huge fan of some of the mechanics that i had in the game but those are probably like oh, the only two well and i was i was gonna say the witcher 3 but that was 2015 um and then you know i i can will we, bring can we up really include open oh. world games though i would say the witcher 3 because is, open world because we're well, we were it's talking about artificially. Yeah. Well, yeah, but you're artificially increasing the length of the game by making you gather, you know, 100 of these or travel here to do this real quick, and then you're gonna have to travel all <laughs> the way back for the next two hours to go do this other stuff. Yeah. I feel. I feel like there's a lot like of world games. MMO there's a lot of artificial lengthening. Well, I th- I think that's perfect then, right? Is if you have a way to make it so the player stays within your game world for as long as possible. Right, and then you get them with like the great DLC things that come out for The Witcher Three that make the game even better, right? And keep players coming back. Then I think that's like completely successful. But like the fifteen-hour campaign that's tacked on to a multiplayer that's tacked on with co-op is just like that just seems so outdated and dead. Right. Yeah. To to add in, um, maybe we can. I, I have several examples. So really quick, I do want to toss out there the games that I, of some other games. Yep. Right. I'm thinking of. The Witcher 3 for a single player experience. Um, Final Fantasy 15, w- which to me was a, you know, above average single I thought player it was, experience. It's not I, like I, it. I, I disagree. I thought it was absolutely terrible. Really? No. Okay, I, thought was it terrible. Was, I thought it was okay. okay. It felt, it felt I, patchworked. I, like there was big yeah. gaps, but I, it was overall a good story. I didn't. I, I don't think. The story was like medium, I think. I know, like I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I no, struggled for, a lot with caring about the characters whatsoever. I found all the motivations behind most of their actions were pretty weak so i just kind of like <laughs> tuned out and just stopped caring <laughs> really yeah i fell in love with the boy band i dude, love me those too dudes. prompto was annoying yeah. but the st- i thought the story was mediocre but yeah <laughs> i think my connection with the characters is the only reason i liked it so much yeah well but i i will certainly concede that like the game is not a 10 out of 10 the game is you know generally yeah. considered to be the best final fantasy right like like that's that's absolutely true there's people are really split on the game so it's like it's hard to really bring that one forward as like this is a great single player experience it's like well it's it's a single player experience <laughs> that some people enjoy and some people don't but like certainly at the end of the day i think it's fairly forgettable maybe i'll like kind of rephrase is i found it like a very forgettable experience and if i'm thinking about like really really strong like 
I guess, uh, story games in the last, let's say, like 10 years is I will mm-hmm. never put Final Fantasy 15 anywhere close to that top 10 list. On the list, right? right? I'd agree right, with that. Right? right? It's, um, when it's completed. The, the last one. Sorry, go ahead, speak. Oh, no, no, you finish because I'm, I'm going to move on. Oh, to I was going to say, my, like, my like if we're list. comparing, let's say, like, we're putting, like, The Witcher 3 as, like, the be all, end all, top of the pedestal, this is the greatest single player game to ever exist type of thing, which it's like, I don't, that's not my opinion, but I feel like a lot of people do see with the witcher 3 is like probably one of the better open world games you can play is i don't think final fantasy 15 is even close to touching like the quality that that game had Mm. yeah no that's that's like i would rather play bioshock infinite than play through final fantasy 15 again oh i do love Bioshock right and i'm pretty biased about that one oh that that that's a good first person campaign that we forgot about was the Bioshock? But that was Bioshock six years yeah. ago, ten years ago now. When the first Infinite? one came out, well, yeah, the first, yeah. When did when did Infinite come out? Let me I think it was like, the last one I was gonna say, um, but again, debate you know very debatable. Um, Kingdom Come Deliverance, oh, pure I didn't play single it. player campaign. That is um, true. I don't know why I forgot about that. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean that that's that was quite enjoyable. Um, but all but probably about as divisive as final fantasy 15 is between us yeah th- okay that was, that was five years ago yeah. um coming up on five years ago here in oh no, no a couple weeks ago it was five years ago for bioshock infinite that came well the kingdom come deliverance uh, thing too is just like i don't i don't know like did you guys both play it yeah yeah, yeah I, I played through the yeah play. how long did it take you to to beat though um, wait, I, I think it's been about 40, right 50 hours. Like, yeah, I, okay, I guess I guess that's better, right? I was gonna, because like from what yeah, from what I had heard, right, is that it was only like a twenty to thirty hour game, and at that point for like a single player game, it's just like I'd rather spend like my twenty or thirty hours in, I don't know, something else. That was kind of like my. I thing, lied. Right? I have seventy nine hours. Okay, never mind the game. You seventy. That's a lot of. What? That is a lot of hours, but. It is. I was definitely getting tired. I was like, there's there's not much more content that I really want to do. I literally, I remember I pissed off my stream so much. <laughs> the The last day, I, yeah, the last day, I literally spent the first hour of the stream just on my horse running through the forest, uh, like clearing up the entire map. So I went into every single corner of the map, just like pushing away the, the fog yeah. so I could see. The whole map was clear, and by the end, it was like, James, <laughs> go do the main quest, <laughs> finish the dang game. Because I had, like, I wanted to still hang out in the in the world that they had built, yeah. but there was just, like, nothing else to do. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so that's, well, there you go. See, I did, like, every side quest, and people were freaking out. They're like, do the main quest. I'm like, not <laughs> yet. <laughs> Yeah, well, and and I would uh, I would certainly encourage any any listeners to uh, drop by our Discord or Twitter or post in YouTube comments for the podcast. Um, if uh, if you have a game that that you think had incredible single player, you know, that came out in the last three or four years um, that we're missing <laughs> because there there probably are some. And, well, I don't uh, think there are. And I'd love I'm, to hear that. Well, I, there there could be. I I always assume that. That uh, given a greater number of people, they'll come up with something that we didn't like. Think someone's of. gonna say Persona Five, and I'm just gonna have to like ignore them because I didn't like that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody probably will yeah, say right? that. That's true. That's true. Does Japan really count? On the... uh, maybe I don't know. No, I, we, oh, should, okay. I, should, I should. I should. I should probably <laughs> say yes, but. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. So that's that's interesting. I mean, I I. It seems like we're all in somewhat of an agreement, though certainly Mobius, you know, it sounds like you have the most biased opinions that, that single players really are dead or, or certainly dying. Me, I guess I could only say I'm just, that just makes me very sad. <laughs> but I can't, I can't say I completely disagree or think that you're I don't wrong. think it should make you sad, though, right? Just like as, I don't know, the industry as a whole evolves, people want games as a social experience. It seems more. Well, see, it makes me sad, though, because the reason it makes me sad is because I remember growing up in my true belief. I'm like, this is going to replace movies because it's yeah. is becoming so interactive that it's going to replace movies. And it's going to replace books. It's it's a new storytelling device. And that was my opinion of gaming from the very beginning. And to, to, to think that there might be an end to single player story driven experiences really makes me upset. 
I don't think necessarily it has to be an end, but they have to evolve. They have to evolve to cater to a new audience through providing more con or more content, like something like The Witcher, where you can play that game for a hundred or so hours and have an awesome time with it. Then just so that's something we can agree on. Then yeah. So so I would say that that story driven experiences are going to be moved towards more towards open world, not a story on rails. Yeah, I think for the most part, unless your story on rails is like it's probably a true statement is. Yeah like fantastic which i don't know a lot of them <laughs> being anymore like i'm excited about the last yeah, of sure. us 2 because that felt like that that it felt like a 20 hour visceral movie right where you could it did right and that was like mm. it was really hard to put down for me right because like you ended up caring about the characters and if you can like maybe care about the characters i don't really care about the length i guess but i just want things to well, do yeah. in my games is basically it and my eight hour campaigns i just can't be bothered with anymore yeah, <laughs> my, yeah, fair enough. Right? Fair enough. That's yeah. That's it's going to be interesting with with BattleTech because I'm playing this game and the, there is one thing that I have noticed really quick. And this this will I'll, I'll kind of make this the the concluding point and we'll move on. Um, unless unless you have something absolutely burning to say, but uh, the BattleTech is is slow. <laughs> like that, that's one of the biggest things I've noticed. Like man, this game is. I haven't played a game with pacing quite so slow, and it's. It's enjoyable if you're if you're into tactics and strategy and customization. It's fun. Like it's really cool to see it kind of take its time and let you really dive into the customization and and the fire angles and 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 all the different strategy and everything that's involved. And it's basically, you know, one big, you know, it's a supposedly long single player campaign. Actually, I think I think I read somewhere how long it was supposed to be the campaign's supposed to be, but I've forgotten. But I think I remember laughing at how long it was supposed to be. But now that I'm playing it, I'm like, wow, this, yeah, this might actually, it's like playing FTL with XCOM battles added into it that, uh, that, yeah, that like might take me like 60, 70 hours to beat. Um, but is it, there, uh, is there end game after that? Like, do you get to keep on going or is it like, this is the end of the story? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm I'm not sure exactly if they're going to have challenges or or what their plans are for that. I haven't been I haven't kept up too much on the Kickstarter, but there there is there is multiplayer which which I haven't tried out yet. So we'll we'll see how that one goes. But but yeah, it is certainly a single player experience, but they they made it into a way that uh it, it's it's long, right? Yeah, they they're giving you that excuse to play it for a long long time, not just not just the short and sweet like you know pure cinematic sort of sort of experience so yeah so yeah to be fair i got one one thing to bring up i think take us yeah yeah so i think your guys's opinions of what's long or short is way different than mine and uh, to to put it into perspective for me i stream eight hours every single day right and because of that to me an eight hour campaign that means i can play it through one stream and that's that's good there's a certain games where i want to just play an eight hour stream for example wolfenstein I did that in one one stream, and I was happy with it. It was a fun stream. We had lots of viewers. It was great. And then for me, a long stream, like, I want to be able to play something for the next month. And and eight hours a day for the next month. Right, right. Yeah, you know, 50 and so, plus hours a week. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And so, so for me, like... I don't know. I, I just noticed that everybody's saying, like, long or short. You guys keep on using that terminology, and I'm like, I, I want to I define my definition of long or short, you know? Hmm. Hmm. No, that's... That, yeah, no, that's, that's a good clarification, because I... I certainly don't stream as much as you and Mobius doesn't even stream games. So he's not, he's not streaming that long either. Right. And so, yeah, no, that's fair. That's, 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 that's a fair point to just keep the perspective as they say is a yeah. lovely hand to hold. Um, it's, it's a good point to remember to, to tint our opinions with, with that knowledge that like if people's definitions of a long game or a short game are exactly different. Yeah, yeah. All right, so speaking of The Witcher 3, um, there's been talks, and we can we can just kind of go into a little bit of fandom here, I think. Um, the Netflix is, is making a Witcher series. They're making, um, looks like it's going to be about eight episodes, like, you know, one season. And uh, they're going to make uh, a TV show based on The Witcher. And... What's interesting is actually going to be based on the on the books, right? The, which the games are based on the the Witcher books, and 
and they're gonna be they're gonna be coming out with a show, and it's still let's see, it's twenty. So yeah, there's there's still about two years away from actual release, um, but it's <laughs> there there have been so many video game to movie um, adaptations that have arguably all been garbage, and. Uh, you know, I mean, how, how much trust do we have in Netflix for making a, an excellent series? And uh, could this become more of a trend if it if it ends up being really good? You know, do you th- or do you think this Netflix can can break the curse rather of of really really poor video game adaptations? Um, Man, and are you guys going to watch it? I'm going to watch it for sure. But you know, so so honestly, if anybody's going to pull it off properly, it's going to be Netflix. Netflix has really done things with shows that I, I, I don't know. I, I have a lot of faith in Netflix. They, they very rarely put out bad TV. And what I, are some I, of your favorite Netflix shows? What have you seen? Oh, man. Uh, honestly, uh, pretty much everything I've seen of theirs is great. Uh, they're, and I'm, are you, I'm are so you a bad Stranger with, Things fanatic? I, I wouldn't say fanatic. I really enjoy it. I've watched them once. I, I don't okay. I don't like go back and watch TV shows more than once, except for like mm-hmm. The Office, which I watch way too much. It's uh, a lot. But uh, yeah, so Stranger Things is great. Um, House of Cards, fantastic. Um, mm. uh, the the Marvel stuff, like the uh, the lower key Marvel characters that they're doing. I can't think of any names right now because I'm terrible with names, but all that stuff has been really, really good. Yeah. The, yeah. There's the Daredevil and uh, Jessica Jones. Yeah. Those are the two, yeah, two of the, the ones that I've seen that I I, I really appreciate those. I yeah, they're they're both really well done. And then uh, what's that sci-fi uh, sci-fi one they just made based on the novels? Lost in Space. Oh yeah. No, no, I haven't seen that yet. I, I heard this pretty good though. Uh, the yeah, one that, they, came no, just that is the sci- that is a sci-fi one that they just made. yeah, it's like sci-fi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, made. that's my bad. The one just before that where the, <laughs> uh, the where you the the human bodies are called sleeves. Oh, altered carbon. Al- altered carbon. I mean, oh. like. Such good TV. I almost call them films mm-hmm. because I watch them back to back. So it's like watching an eight hour film, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. but yeah, oh, yeah, I mean, such good, well-made TV. So if, mm-hmm. if they're going to pull it off, if, if anybody's going to pull off a fantastic video game TV series, it's going to be Netflix. What do you think about this whole, all this nonsense movies? Um, okay. You guys aren't allowed to hate me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, hey, hey, this is this is the real bias. Is podcast it is it okay to loud and proud, baby? Is it okay to say I'm just like completely uninterested in it? Like, is that allowed? Yeah. Like, yeah. Is like if it's good, I'll watch it. But see, like you, th- I didn't like any of the Marvel stuff that Netflix put out. Oh. Um, I enjoyed all. Do you have a reason? I just um, outside of Daredevil, I'll say that because I think the two seasons of Daredevil are really, really well made. Uh, outside of Daredevil, I found all the other ones pretty weak. Um, just like character and story wise, I just found them uninterest and ugh, I just found them fairly uninteresting, and I kind of stopped watching them after the first couple episodes. But that's just me, I guess, and my like TV watching. I guess it's pretty bad. Altered Carbon, I thought was really, really fun though. I thought that was a really good one. Um, my big thing is always like, if they're gonna make a Witcher series, I just don't want it to be like Game of Thrones light, and them just try to make their own version of Game of Thrones. It's like like them to actually make something worthwhile of watching. And if I guess that's the case, but I'm just until until it is said to be good, I will care about it. How about that? Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, so that I'll ask a follow-up question for that, Nobius. Who uh, who do you listen to? Who do you listen to that says it's good? Who do I listen to that I would say who, it was who, good? Yeah. Who 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 would you need to hear that from that it's uh, good? The, Is it just the, like a certain number masses. of people, or just the masses? Yeah, okay. If okay. there was, so what do you do if it's fifty fifty? If it's fifty fifty, well, normally I'll end up watching for myself, right? But because that's normally what I like to do. But if like if I'm bored after like the first episode, but like, no, if people are saying like, this is good and it's worthwhile watching. And like the majority say like, this is an enjoyable eight hour adventure thing that Witcher fans and normal people alike can enjoy. I'll be like, all right, I'll give it a try and watch it. <laughs> Witcher fans and normal people. Yeah. Normal. Just <laughs> and normal. So all, all Witcher fans are weird. 
<laughs> sure, I guess. Most of them. Not normal. Yeah, uh, I mean, if you want to play a game for like 150 hours, I don't know. I Maybe that's kind of weird, but... <laughs> no, I like... I, it, so so basically, you're, what you want is a good standalone TV yeah, show, not just a big, like, uh, if, if it's, I, not just a big show made just for fans. Like I don't, I don't care that it's The Witcher. I care that it's good, and if it's good, then I'll watch it, regardless if it's a Witcher story or not. But if it's, I don't know, like the you know, like that really really bad Doom movie with The Rock in it. Yes. Yeah, like it's one of my all time favorites. Like, by the way, terrible movie, yeah. absolutely movie. horrendous. No, it's it's actually right, not. but like that's just like if it's just like that, and like people just watch it because it has the name The Witcher on it. I just couldn't be like I can't be bothered at this point. Mm-hmm. No, I feel you there. There was a whole no, slew of those right. That that's, like yeah, there's just lengthy. there's a lot of really really bad video game and comic book movies and shows that I just can't be bothered anymore. I just want it to be a, a good experience regardless of if it uses the Witcher IP or not. So on that That's note, fair. like, how did you feel about, like, the World of Warcraft movie? I didn't watch it. <laughs> oh, okay. see, okay, there you no, go. I didn't watch but, it. Hey, there, there is a man whose actions back up his words, because that, that's a great example uh, that, of probably, like, what what you would be expecting The Witcher to be. It's like you hear kind of mixed reviews. Yeah. Some people love it. Some people, like, pretty much said it was, like, pretty mediocre. It's probably, like, 60-40 between the 40% fanatics, 60% saying, eh, it was okay or worse. And you don't go see it. Yeah, pretty much. I was like, yeah. this is like, okay. I was like, yeah, if it's only okay, like, eh, I just don't care enough to go see something only okay. I want to see something like amazing that is worth my time. Hmm. So if I had to it. sum up the way I think Amobius bases his entertainment, is that he's very picky. So he, yes. he, it seems like he's not a guy that has a lot of time for entertainment, you know, entertainment free time. So he's very picky about how he chooses, you know, how he chooses. I to guess, spend it. I guess, yeah. You, you don't just soak up media, right? You, you, you actually choose. Well, like I like to soak yeah. up media, but I like to soak up good media and stuff that I think is fun and like enjoyable, whatever, for whatever reason, right? Mm-hmm. Like if we're on like the whole like I don't know, I was gonna bring up the like the Marvel cinematic stuff, right? Where like I don't think they're that good anymore, so like I won't be go seeing infinity war unless people say this yeah. is like the greatest movie to ever exist because right? i've just lost all interest <laughs> in it whatsoever right, i'm with right. you there though like i'm the same way about the marvel movies like did you guys like the black panther i I, I actually haven't okay seen it i haven't now. seen it okay i didn't see it either right but like oh my god we, we're all we're all, we're, all, we're, we're blasphemers god we're all of terrible nerds right we're all terrible right on this pod and, and None of us have seen Black No, right, but, like, going with, like, Black Panther, <laughs> oh, right, is good. everyone said, this is a really great movie, right? This is, like, the best oh, that yeah. Marvel has ever done, right? This is, like, the best Marvel movie of late, right? And then, I don't know, just, like, looking at the Marvel movies that have come out, it's, like, all these are, in my opinion at least, like, fairly below-average movies, even though they might be, like, fun popcorn flicks, and, mm. I don't know. Maybe in my... I feel the same way, man. Yeah. If it didn't have the word Marvel in it, it nobody would watch exactly. it. Exactly. Right? It's like people are only really watching because it's the Black Panther and they want to pretend like they watched the or read the comics growing up so they can go see a movie. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. No, that that is exactly... Hmm. Oh, boy. Maybe I should know, shouldn't open this can of worms. Do it. It's basically it right how now. I feel Say about right Star Wars. Oh, my God. Star Wars The Last Jedi. Okay. It, like, it's like, okay, because Star Wars now has every single effing pleb that oh. thinks a movie, uh, you know, a uh, 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 billion dollar grossing movie that comes out on May 25th, you know, is like the height of media, you know, be, every single person like that on the planet is now sucked into Star Wars. And that is the only reason that. Yeah. The Last Jedi actually made all that money. <laughs> no. Yeah. Like if you branded oh. The Last Jedi as something completely different. No, I don't think you're like, maybe it would have been okay, but like it probably would have been completely forgettable. Like a just completely forgettable oh, yeah. sci-fi thing. It was no, 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 no. The movie was forgettable. <laughs> it was forgettable, but it did make a lot of money. Sure. And yeah, I you, disagree. You don't completely, make nearly the, guys. You just don't make nearly the Why? money on it. So the re the, I disagree completely oh, about that. Okay. Like, so, well, no, no. The, well, the reason I disagree. So, so. I guess well, there I'll is put a time limit on this conversation. We're not yeah, going to yeah. turn this into a Star Wars podcast. <laughs> for sure. But, yeah, for sure. You, but finish. Yeah, but finish really, point, so so the, the reason that it was forgettable is for people who weren't super into Star Wars growing up. And I mean, I mean, like, really, really into Star Wars, right? 
So there, there's a lot of what's the word for it? I'm, I'm looking for a word here. Fan something. Like fan fan service. Fan service. Nostalgia. Fan service. Lots yeah. and lots of fan service in that movie. That's all it was. The dice, you know, Han Solo's dice. But I don't um, want to go see a Luke fan Skywalker service. Skywalker finally becoming a part of the becoming a part of the force. You know. Yeah. Like yeah. sure, but there might be a lot of fan yeah. service in it, right? But if it's just like a two and a half hour piece of fan service, then that's not maybe like a good narrative experience then especially when with the force awakens was basically that wrapped around a half decent narrative um or actually i think force awakens actually had a pretty solid narrative if it wasn't the exact same narrative as two of the previous star wars movies (laughs) that already exist um and so, so like that one already had all the fan service and then you come out with this one which is like even less narrative goodness and yeah just like weird fan service and right but yeah anyways no you're i i I understand there's there's uh and and i i want to say too me me condemning the movie doesn't mean i'm saying there is absolutely no part in that movie that is entertaining or redeemable in any way (laughs) this thing was a very poorly made movie and branded differently would have made 10 percent if that of of what it did make and and i think for the same reasons why like Mobius is talking about like the Marvel movies and such. Um, just it's branding gets gets all kinds of people who yeah like they want to pretend they want to pretend that they've read all the all the extended universe Star Wars novels. <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> or they want to pretend that they read Black Panther when they were kids. <laughs> yeah, or pretend like, that mm. they didn't just Wikipedia Doctor Strange fifteen minutes after the the trailer popped out so they could hey. seem like they understand what's going on. Absolutely right. I, like I, I was a kid that was nerdy. I grew up in the comic book store. Yeah, right? I know there was only three of us in there. Where did these millions of people come from that claimed to have read the goddamn comic books? Like, actually, yeah. guys, where did they all come from? I grew up reading um, Iron Man throughout my entire life, and Iron Man is the greatest comic book known to man. I was like, nah, dude, no, <laughs> what? like literally I mean, nobody read Iron Man growing up because it was yeah, terrible, no. right? <laughs> but you saw him on the Sunday board, the Saturday morning cartoons, though. Yeah, the uh, I did like him in that one, The Avengers. I did like those ones, but I was also like really very young and just thought the action was cool. When they were all talking to each other, I didn't like it because I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. No, I well, and and to go back, you know, I I, I do want to throw this one out that it kind of, I guess kind of change gears here. Um, I I personally, and I like to joke that this is like the Seattle hipster in me, but it, it's not always the case. Um, it, the, I I I don't listen to other people. Um, if they're talking about a show, um, I, I kind of have to make up my own mind, which is why I tend to, I I tend to absorb more media than I'd really, I'd, I'd really like to. I, I, I absorb more bad media, (laughs) you know, than, than I would prefer, but I do it because I need to be able to, I feel like I need to be able to have an opinion on the only way to do it is to, is to watch it. That's why I opinion on it. yeah. yeah. I, do you watch any anime, Mobius? Uh, not re- I'm like or Ponage. I'm like I'm, I don't. I'm pr- I mean, I watch Dragon Ball. Yeah, I'm like sure. pretty new into anime. There's not, like yeah, okay. The, yeah. there's just this new show. But it, just to make it simple, there's this new show, Darling in the Franks, right? And uh, my stream, uh, it just there's a cu- couple people who have been going absolutely crazy about it, and uh, and I also follow a bunch of anime anime blogs and. Sometimes I'm on 4chan anime and um, sometimes and, and the the internet an, anime like the internet community the anime community on the internet has gone nuts like if you can imagine like like the way people went nuts about like Lost like this show was just uh, the last couple episodes of just everybody's losing their minds about what's going on in this show um, and I watched it right and and I was like this is this is bad and i knew it was going to be bad which is why i hadn't been watching it. you know it's more 15 weeks into the show and i i refused to watch it because i knew it was going to be bad <laughs> and i watched and i'm like this is this is exactly what i thought it was going to be but it, it's so big right it's so culturally relevant at least to like a culture that i pay attention to the weeb culture <laughs> yeah you love yourself so much. you know that, that like i i did make i did make sure i watched it yeah. so yeah it's that's interesting a, a slightly different take but um, it's usually why I, why I consume, why I consume media of that kinds. And why I've, I've found I've become less picky over the years 
because of that. I'm the same way. I, I consume way more content than uh, than I wish I did because so much of it's trash. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do. I need to form my own opinion about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. It's like just I'm too I'm too curious and I, I have to know for myself. I can't. I just feel like I can't. I don't know. Maybe I have trust issues. I just I can't trust Twitch chat. Or what do you other think you can't trust Twitch chat, dude? They're the most trustworthy <laughs> bunch I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I just, I can't do it. I, even my friends, a lot of the time, even my friends, a lot of the time, I just can't, I can't trust them uh, that, you know, about, about different things that are, whether they're good or bad. And so yeah. for me, I find that it's usually because I disagree with everything everybody says. <laughs> like, like, they'll be like, this is garbage. I'm like, what do you mean? It's pretty good. <laughs> Yes. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's also why I've been trying out all these, all these new video games, which brings, brings us all the way back around all, all the way back full circle because I've, I've been enjoying games like kingdom come deliverance that a lot of people are, are torn about, yeah. right. Or, or final fantasy 15 as well. A lot of people are very split on how good or bad that game is. And, and, uh, and yeah, I don't know. I just, I got to figure it out myself. So, that's what I've been doing. Man. All right. Any final thoughts? On T wow, we we did we strayed away from the Witcher series. Well well, no, that, that was that was a pretty relevant rabbit hole, I suppose. Yeah. Be, I know. Um, I'm just gonna, gonna end it with like watch things for yourself and don't regurgitate other people's opinions. Thank you. Hey. Oh, yeah, don't pretend other people's opinions are your own. Yeah. Yeah. Stay biased. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> How 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 cringe is that? On a one to ten. Uh, yeah, I stay I, biased. I, I did a solid <laughs> ha ha emote in real life right there. It's like <laughs> yikes. <laughs> yeah, like I, I cringe pretty good. Okay, all right, um, all right, good, 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 good. Well, we'll keep that one going yeah. then. <laughs> all right, so this coming week, what are you looking forward to to playing? What are you looking forward to streaming? Any uh, maybe some some real life event that you're super pumped about, like your, when your NDA lifts or something, Mobius? I don't know. That's probably not. Um, why don't you share with, with us what you're looking forward to the next the next week or 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 a couple weeks? Um, um, so Frostpunk comes out tomorrow, which I'm really really excited about. The game oh, looks yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, for those of you guys don't know what Frostpunk is, it's a like post apocalyptic city builder. And in like some like new dawn ice age type of thing, and there's a lot of like cool culty religion stuff, and some like really cool like dystopian sci fi tones that are throughout, and it looks pretty dope. And then an indie game called The Swords of Ditto is coming out tomorrow as well. And me and my girlfriend are gonna play it, and it's gonna be pretty fun. And yeah, that's about it. Swords of Ditto, that's the uh, that's the Oh, what do they call those? Where you die and it's permanent. Yeah, it's like the rogue. Yeah, rogue. It's like a rogue-like. Zelda-ish rogue. Like when I say Zelda, I mean like the old Zelda stuff, like the two D things, like mm. Zelda roguelite mixed together thing with like really cutesy, fun graphics and some cool. Uh, they they do death really really cool in that game, and I'm really excited to see how it all works. Okay. Yeah, I read some. Quick. I read some early reviews on it. It's been pretty good. Yeah, it's it's. I'm really excited for it. Now, quick follow up here to Frostpunk. Yes, sir. Which is which is mostly interesting to me, just because I, I usually I enjoy really unique and different yeah. sort of aesthetics, um, overall art design for for games, especially. I love me some um, aesthetic. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And uh, the <laughs> the interesting thing I read about Frostpunk is that it's it's diesel punk. Yeah, is, is kind of the, the aesthetic, which is. Like, God, is there any other game? <laughs> like, which is, uh, you know, uh, something you didn't even know, I didn't even know existed, because there's steampunk, right? But diesel punk is, I mean, like, that is, that is so I, interesting I think to it's me. really well, just a say semantics Final Fantasy VII is diesel punk. Say again? Final Fantasy VII is diesel punk. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. I think it's huh. just a semantic difference. I think it's just people trying to just say that there's a difference between like steampunk and diesel punk, but well, I mean, I think steam is more. I mean, I don't want to get nitpicky, but I think steam is more <laughs> like brass, bronze, that kind of stuff. Well, mm. well, diesel punk is more like uh, industrial era stuff. Maybe. Hmm. Hmm. I'll give that one to you. Okay, I'll give that to you. Well, if if you Google diesel punk 
and steampunk. You, you get some pretty cool. Yeah, some movies. sweet stuff. If you're if you do that kind of thing. Yeah, so there's that stuff, and then hopefully I actually make something cool for a portfolio thing because I need to update that, and then yeah, video games. Yeah, video games. There you go. Yeah. Chill, dude. How about you, Punish? Man, I, you? I'm not gonna lie. So, so for me, it's all about BattleTech. So this week, uh, you know, Tuesday, BattleTech it up. Probably Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'll be playing that, and then back to Sea of Thieves, and then I'll be doing BattleTech probably Tuesdays and Thursdays after that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, mixing it in. I, I've been having a hard time finding a uh, what I call like my break it up game. Right. Like I like to have a game in between my normal game. And uh, I just haven't had one lately. So I think it's going to be Battletech moving forward. And I had a hard time, though. I had a hard time. I was so torn. I didn't know if I wanted to do Battletech or Steam or a Steampunk. Frostpunk. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. It's Diesel Punk, okay? Yeah, but uh, I, yeah, I had a hard time choosing. I ended up choosing Battletech. It's just... Uh, yeah. More your style. Mm-hmm. More, yeah, more of my style. More more my stream style as well. Sure. It's the kind of stuff we yeah. play. Yeah, okay. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty much all... All battle tech, and I'm I'm looking forward to. I'm not sure exactly when I'm going to start, but I am looking forward to playing um, God of War four again. A game that I see all the ten out of ten reviews, and I'm just like, I have to play this game now because I don't trust these people. <laughs> yeah, I don't trust the internet. Um, so I I want to stream God of War four, um, and also Total War Thrones of Britannia comes out in uh, two weeks. Yes, or ten yes. days or something like that, um, and I'm I'm leaning towards like probably checking that out and probably getting some good stream time playing that. It'll be my first Total War game since I stopped playing Total War Warhammer in January. So we should get some multiplayer in there sometime, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. No, that would be we could do a a co stream. Oh yes, I will think upon it. I don't, I don't want to throw you under the bus there and make you do it, but <laughs> you basically have to do so it just now because idea. it's been recorded. Yeah, yep. that's yeah. right. You're exactly. locked in full time. <laughs> that's okay. If if I was a little bit more passive aggressive, I would I wouldn't be able to just <laughs> like I just be like, well, you asked, so I can't. You know, saying no isn't even an option, right? I just like <laughs> just an idea just popped in my head because yeah, that, yeah, that's something no. I'm really looking forward to as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, okay. You're going to be playing Thrones as well. Oh. But yeah, I guess so. I guess it's that is technically technically next week. So yeah, so pretty much this week it's gonna be it's gonna be all it's gonna be all uh, battle tech, getting into the end game, and and it so far it feels like the progression is real. You know, like like JRPG levels of like okay, in the first ten hours you're playing like with this level of power, and then the last ten hours of the game is just like exponentially. You know, yeah. You're just dealing ten times more damage than you did in the beginning, or like thirty times more, or whatever. And I call that Dragon Ball progression, right? Because you know, it starts out just doing kung fu, and the next thing you know, they're having to be careful so they don't blow up their own planet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because the moves are so strong. Right. <laughs> Dragon Ball is Dragon Ball progression. Yeah. Well, there you go. There you go. All right. Well, there we go. That's that's all we got. Thanks for thanks for coming out, dudes. Why don't you give a shout out? We'll go Mobius first. Why don't you give a shout out again? Where we can find you? Where we can uh, interact with you on a daily basis? Follow me on Twitch, please. I'm desperate. Twitch.tv slash Mobius Life. I have Twitter, which is Twitter. Is it com or ca? Hold on, I'm double checking right now. Give me a second. Com. Com. Twitter.com slash oh, it's a Mobius Life. Does that too? Okay. And like, then if you're in Canada, it might be different. Nah, I, th- I think it's because like Twitter's like an American meme. So it's like alt.com. And then um for any of you art people that are that want a look at some really below average art and somehow I got hired, uh, you can follow my art station, which is Nathaniel It's pretty good. It's it's, yeah, pretty good. it's yeah, it's a thing. Yeah. Okay, but wait, wait, I I was boasting for it, but I, I talked right over the name of it. It's again. fine. So give the name one more time. Nathaniel Harrower dot artstation dot com. Cool. Cool. There we go. Yeah. How about you, Ponage? Where can we find you, dude? You can always catch me on twitch.tv slash masteropponage2, or you can catch our uploads on YouTube at Master Opponage Gaming. You can also follow me on Twitter or Instagram at, uh, both of them have different names, but they're Master Opone or The Master Opone. I can't remember which. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. They'll they'll find you somehow. I'm sure. I'm sure. All the links All are right. on my Twitch page. Hit me up on Twitch. You'll see everything else. 
There you go. Every, it twitches the, the center of it all, the end all, yep. the all, to all your social desires. Absolutely. The, the beautiful gentleman here My today. aspirations. Give me thumbs up. I need them so badly. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Same. <laughs> oh, Mobius Life just followed me. Thank you, Mobius. You're the pony. Welcome to the stream. It's good to have you here, my man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh-huh. It's beautiful. <laughs> all right. All right. Thanks for being here, guys. And uh, thanks for all the real bias opinions. This was the Real Bias Podcast. Thanks for, stop- thanks for stopping by. Thanks for listening. Oh, and uh, I'll, I'll sell myself really quick. Twitch.tv slash Real Biased Gaming. YouTube.com slash Real Biased Gaming, which is where you can find future podcasts as well. Uh, looking forward to getting live streams going on Twitch and then posting those live streams of the podcast uh, to YouTube. Uh, so that'll be the future. So make sure you subscribe to YouTube there to get those in the future. And thanks for sticking around. Make sure you share those Real Biased Opinions either on the YouTube, on the Twitch page, or Twitch.tv slash Real... I'm sorry, Twitter.com slash Real Bias. Give us your thoughts. And uh, until next time, keep on gaming and uh, keep those opinions biased. Bye.